the meninges, triple protection of the CNS. The human brain, a marvel of nature, is a complex organ that serves as the command center for our entire body. Yet, its folds and convolutions require a protective shield that ensures its well-being. These sheets are known as the meninges of the brain, a trio of membranes that safeguard the delicate neural masterpiece within. The meninges not only shield the brain from physical trauma, but also help maintain a stable environment for it by regulating the flow of nutrients and waste removal. They anchor the brain in place and also protect structures that pass through it like the blood vessels, nerves and lymphatic channels. The spaces between the meninges also contain CSF or cerebrospinal fluid which is a great indicator of health or pathology. The meninges are of three types, the outer dura mater, the middle arachnoid mater and the inner pia mater. Let's first discuss the outer dura mater. You could say the dura is like the first child, a diligent, tough follower of the rules. In fact, the term dura mater literally means a tough mother. And as the name suggests, it is the tough connective tissue membrane of the brain and the spinal cord. It has an outer endosteal layer lining the inner surface of the skull bones and an inner meningeal layer enclosing the brain. The dura mater likes to be organized and therefore it sends several folds that divides the cranial cavity into compartments. These folds include the fax cerebri which occupies the median longitudinal fissure between the two cerebral hemispheres. The tentorium cerebelli, which separates the cerebellum from the occipital lobes of the cerebrum. The fax cerebelli, a small sickle-shaped fold in the sagittal plane, projecting forward into the posterior cerebellar notch. And the diaphragma cellae, a circular horizontal fold, forming the roof of the hypophysial fossa. Let's discuss the blood supply of the dura mater. The inner layer of the dura mater requires minimal vascularization, while the outer layer receives nourishment from meningeal branches of various arteries. The arterial supply varies across different compartments of the cranial cavity. The dura of the anterior cranial fossa is supplied by meningeal branches of the ophthalmic arteries, the anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries, as well as a branch of the middle meningeal artery. The dura of the middle cranial fossa receives blood supply from the middle and accessory meningeal arteries, as well as meningeal branches of the internal carotid and ascending pharyngeal arteries. The dura of the posterior cranial fossa gets its blood supply from the meningeal branches of the vertebral and occipital arteries. Let's shift our focus to the nerve supply of the dura mater. It is mainly supplied by the branches of the vagus and the tritominal nerve. The cranial dura is structurally different from the spinal dura. In the cranium, the outer dura is firmly attached to the periosteum of the skull. However, the spinal dura is made of only one layer and loosely surrounds the spinal cord. Now let us shift your focus to the next layer, the middle child, called the arachnoid mater. As we've already established, the arachnoid mater is situated between the outer dura mater and the inner pia mater. Like most middle children, the arachnoid mater is carefree. Its fibrous structure is so haphazard that the term arachnoid is derived from its web-like appearance. Arachnids refer to spiders. Being the rebel it is, it doesn't even follow the folds and convolutions of the brain. Instead, it just sits as a loose covering around it. However, it maintains a strong bond with its younger sibling, the pia mater, through fibrous extensions called arachnoid trabeculae. Chaotic on the outside, yet compassionate on the inside, 
Our middle child holds a space beneath it called the subarachnoid space, which is filled with CSF or cerebrospinal fluid. Through this, it protects, cushions, and provides buoyancy to the brain and spinal cord. Another feature of the arachnoid mater is the arachnoid villi, also known as arachnoid granulations. These finger like projections protrude into the dural sinuses for the absorption of cerebrospinal fluid into the bloodstream, helping to regulate CSF pressure. Now let us discuss its blood and nerve supply. The arachnoid mater rarely ever asks for help and therefore lacks a direct blood supply and nerve supply. However, the arachnoid mater relies on the diffusion of nutrients and oxygen from the CSF into the subarachnoid space. Moving on now to the youngest of the three siblings. The most loved by all is the tender, delicate membrane called the pia mater. In Latin, the term means tender mother. Like most youngest children, this one stays close, firmly adhering to the surface of the brain and the spinal cord. In fact, it even follows every fold and elevation of the brain, anatomically called the sulcus and gyrus, much like the clingy baby that follows its parent around all day. It has a rich nerve and blood supply and allows vessels and nerves to pass through it into the brain. The nerve supply, like that of the dura mater, is mainly from the vagus and trigeminal nerves. The arachnoid mater and the pia mater together are called the leptomeninges. The term leptos literally means thin and delicate. They are functionally clubbed together because they share their function in transport of vessels and CSF. Pop quiz Now it is time for some clinical correlation. Meningitis is an inflammation of the meninges, typically caused by infectious agents like bacteria, viruses or fungi. It can lead to symptoms such as severe headaches, fever, neck stiffness and altered mental status. Meningiomas are slow-growing tumours that arise from the meninges. These tumours are typically benign, but they can cause alarming symptoms if they press on adjacent brain tissue or cranial nerves. Meningocele and myelomeningocele are congenital conditions where the meninges protrude out, forming a pouch-like structure at the spine. This pouch is called the meningocele when it involves only the meninges. Myelomeningocele, in particular, involves the protrusion of the meninges as well as the spinal cord. Meningeal metastases occurs when some cancers, particularly breast and lung cancer, spread to the meninges. This condition can cause symptoms like headaches, seizures, and changes in mental status. All right, let's talk about bleeds involving the meninges. Epidural hematoma is the collection of blood between the outer dura mater and the skull bone. Subdural hemorrhage is a bleed beneath the dura. Accumulation of this blood is called subdural hematoma and is caused when the vessels between the dura and the arachnoid maters rupture as a result of trauma. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is the condition that involves bleeding into the subarachnoid space. They often result from ruptured cerebral aneurysms and are associated with severe headaches, neck pain and neurological deficits. 
urgent medical attention may be required. Pop quiz. With that, we come to the end of this session on the meninges. In the next session, we will learn about the dural venous sinuses, which are pockets of venous blood seen between the folds of the dura mater. We hope you had fun learning with us.